sitting here with the producer, uh, Nelson Wass, for Red Dog. Thanks for talking to us. Thanks for coming. Um, so just a bit of background on yourself. You were born in Perth. I grew you, up in Perth. Yeah. Uh, and then when I was about 17, I left Australia. I went to live in Boston for a couple of years and then I gravitated towards Los Angeles where I worked in the film business. I worked for Village Roadshow and eventually uh, for Universal Pictures, Warner Brothers and a director called Ivan Reitman. Yep, so you worked on like Junior and um, what was the other one? There's a few of them. I've written them down, Private Parts. Yeah, I, I, I was part of the team on those movies and I was even... Uh, I had a bit, my first experience was on a dog movie was uh, on Beethoven's second, which was with St. Bernard's, which was a lot of fun. So, and you also produced the film N Ned Kelly. Um, what's your fascination with Australian stories? You know, I think Australian stories are world class and there's a number of them that are uh, really define the Australian spirit and what it means to live and work and play here and I think Ned Kelly was one yep. and I also think Red Dog very much falls into that category also. So when you read the book um, about Red Dog, what drew you to actually want to put it on the screen? Well look, as a kid I'd heard the legendary stories of the great Red Dog and uh, when I heard that Louis de Bernier, who's probably best known for Captain Crelly's mandolin, uh, had, you know, he scours the world looking for great stories. He's written stuff in Turkey and South America and Greece. And when I heard that he'd come to our backyard and, decide, you know, seen the Red Dog statue outside of Dampier and uh, was so fascinated by that and thought how strange that a town could erect a statue not to a politician or the explorer that found it but to a dog and he wanted to know more. Um, I, I just thought what a great story and then when I read the book I just realised oh, what a privilege to come home and make a movie yeah. about a West Australian story that you know can be seen around Australia and around the world. So this film well, the book was trying to be optioned by Spielberg's DreamWorks as well. Yeah. So going up to with them for the rights to the film, what made you, well, get the film? Well, look, I flew to London and I sat down with Louis and I said, look, you've got to let me do this movie. I know, I'm from that state. I know that region. Um, I, I was lucky in a way that the, the American studios, they wanted to relocate the story, so they wanted to do it in, in Texas. And I said, look, if, if you want to do it right, we've got to go to the Pilbara, we've got to go to Dampier, we've got to embed our crew um, among the Rio Tinto operations and show, show the two kilometre trains and show the red dust. And I think we did that. Um, and I think it came across last night at the, uh, at the premiere in Perth and certainly in the premiere in Caratha. People feel that this movie is very authentic. And you also managed to snatch some big companies to back it like Rio Tinto, Woodside and West Track. Yeah. For starters, how did you manage that and how did you pitch the idea to them? Look, I, you know, uh, I, I said this is a once in a lifetime opportunity uh, this story takes place in your backyard. We can shine the spotlight on your region and on your operations. Um, it wasn't, you know, we made this movie for one third the budget of what I did in Ed Kelly. Um, it was a really tough shoot and we needed help. So, you know, we needed the two kilometre trains, we needed the trucks, we needed to show the conveyor belts and the iron ore mines. Yeah. And, they, and they, they were wonderful. They let us in and um, they became part of the Red Dog team. And, and it wasn't just them, you know, it was also locals. Like, I didn't have the money for extras and I didn't have the money for period cars, so I'd advertise in the local papers and the local community would come to me and when we need, all of a sudden seven cars would turn up at our production offices and uh, when we needed the big scenes on the beach, all the people that you see on frame are real dampier locals. And when I screened it in Pilbara on Wednesday, it was so fantastic because they were all there. And when they saw themselves on screen, they were all, it was an open-air cinema. They were all cracking tinnies and cheering. It was fantastic. Well, that's pretty good. So you actually started filming in Adelaide yes. um, in a warehouse where you recreated like the Mermaid yeah. Bar. How did you go recreating it? to the best that you could. Well, I had a fabulous production designer, Ian Gracie, who does all of Baz Luhrmann films. And, and 
like everyone on this film, we all we didn't do it for the money. We all came on board because we believed in the story, and we were very, very lucky to get such a world class production designer. And so all the exteriors and locations are shot where it happened, but we had to recreate a 1970s uh, interior of a pub. And to do that, we had to do it in a studio. There's obviously no studios in Dampier. <laughs> um, so we did it in Adelaide. So the scenes that you see inside the bar are actually, we built those sets from scratch. Yeah. So once you got to the Pilbara, what was, was there any logis uh, logistical nightmares filming on Rio Tinto sites? Well, look, they were helpful, but we did have to follow their rules. So my entire crew had to do a safety, a three-day safety induction course, and we were randomly drug tested. And I'm very proud to say that none of, none of my entire crew failed the random drug test, which is a pretty cool thing to say for a film crew. Um, but we were very, very observant, and we worked together as a, a team. There was a Rio safety crew assigned to us. And, you know, we had to work with what we got. And, for example, when Josh was doing his scenes and he was wearing the, you know, the thongs and the singlets, which were the... Um, we would have to cover him up with a hard hat and, and safety goggles and PPE gear and, you know, high-res stuff. Uh, we'd set up the shot. As soon as the cameras were ready to roll, we'd take all the stuff off. They'd do the scene with, with the dog or with Rachel and Josh. And then as, when the director called cut, everyone had to get back and wear the safety. But, um, you know, we, we were very cautious and, and um, we had no accidents, which was a fantastic result. Yeah, that's good. So music plays a big part of the film. Um, did you have songs in mind prior to production or was it really once you saw the footage and you sort of matched it up from there? Well, look, there were a number of songs that... I remember growing up as a kid that were seminal classic tracks and they were the songs that we'd always have playing in the production office and, and um, uh, in the background of the making of the movie and we, we couldn't afford all of them so what we would do is we would approach all the musicians and we'd show them the sequence in the film where we wanted to use their track and we just we said look please 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 let us license your film for a fair amount and the ones that liked dogs gave us their tracks and the ones that didn't like dogs, uh, their song's not in the movie. But I, I think the soundtrack is really special. I'm very, very proud of it. And uh, it's amazing. People come out singing those songs. And, and it's those bands that really have influenced, the, you know, the Wolf Mothers and the Jets and all the, you know, the, the bands now that... Um, are, you know that that are Australian and world class love these tunes, and and it's fantastic to see young people rediscovering these songs, these classic Australian rock songs from the 70s. So when you're casting the film and you're looking for a dog, like we got Coco sitting over there, um, how difficult was that to find the right dog? Look, it's hard. We did a, an Australian-wide casting search and I do it on all my movies. I start casting and you audition and quite often you find very, very good actors but occasionally you find a star and Coco really is a star and it, you, you only have to look at his screen test which you can see on YouTube or on our website. Um, we knew from the moment we auditioned Coco he was our dog and uh, he would very much... Uh, yeah, captures the spirit of the real red dog, yeah, and and uh, I love him very much. He's uh, he's come home with me after the shoot. Yeah, so you managed to pull Josh Lucas and um, Rachel Taylor as your leads. Yeah. Um, was it something that you had to sell to them, or did you like say this is the movie that I want to do? Do you want to do it? Sort of scenario. Yeah, look, um, both of them love the screenplay, and both of them love dogs, and. Uh, and, and obviously we're attracted to working with a young, exciting director, Creve Sanders, and, uh, you know, they came on pretty quickly. Yeah, so casting the, the three guys, Pedo, Vano and Jocko, yeah. um, since they pretty much played the narrators in the film, um, was it a bit difficult to cast because you had to really pick the right people? Well, it's a tapestry because people... Uh, around that time when the mining industry was very embryonic, they had to generate a workforce very quickly. So they, they got people from all over Australia and all over the world. So there were people there from South America and Italy and America. So we wanted to show that. So we have a lot of Australians in the film, but also people from overseas. 
And, and, and those three guys you mentioned, we called them the three amigos because I think they, you could see that they, re they showed the real mateship that develops amongst those communities and uh, uh, they were very good. So in the whole pre-production, production and post-production, um, were there any moments that really stand out for you throughout the whole thing? Look, it was very, very special to take a whole film crew into the Pilbara and shoot a movie. No one's done that to the scale we did it. And uh, that was a privilege and something super special to do. And I'll, uh, I'll never forget it. And I'll never forget showing the finished film to them on Wednesday. It was a dream come true. So looking back at the film now and all the process, is there anything that you would have liked to change or are you just over the moon with how it came out? No, the, the team of filmmakers that were behind this film uh, feel that we've done the best we can do and uh, we hope the audience enjoys it. So when, when people watch the film, cinema goers, what sort of feeling do you want them to have when they walk out of the cinema? You know, this film doesn't have a hundred million dollars of special effects, but what I can guarantee people is for a ride on this movie. And, you know, you only had to look at the audience last night. They laughed the whole way through. Some of them shed a tear and they all walked out feeling pretty good. And I think if they can enjoy the ride in the movie as much as the audience did last night, that's as much as any filmmaker can hope for their film. Yeah, we'll definitely need the tissues. Um, <laughs> So now that you do feel good at the end, <laughs> you should let your you don't cry the whole way through. <laughs> no, no, it, it is a very good ending. Um, so now that Coco is getting extremely famous yeah. um, everywhere, and it's also been shown at some film festivals overseas, yeah. is Coco going to retire now? Or Coco is enjoying just being a dog at the moment. So he's he's still part of the team doing some of the. Um, uh, uh, marketing, uh, but you know, I, I think Coco's destiny is going to be long walks and lots of food and hanging out with me. That's it. And just finally, you're doing the publicity trail because obviously the two leads couldn't be present because of other commitments. Yeah. How are you feeling doing all this look, press? I'm, I'm loving it. And look, it's not me; it's a team. I've got my director, and they're, they're, you know, we're working together. I'm covering the west coast; they're covering the east coast. I've got John Batchelor. I've got Rowan Nicol and, and Arthur Angel. And jo I'm not sure if you've seen that we did a junket day in America with Josh and Rachel. And I'm not sure if you've seen some of the stuff that Josh has done on Carrie Ann and on national television. Josh loves this movie and he wishes he could be here, but he's been cast in Clint Eastwood's new film. And I think he's doing a new uh, television series. So we were very lucky to get him to come all this way because he's so busy. And uh, he's helping us take the world Oh, sorry, take the film around the world as well. So he, he took it to Vail when we won the Vail International Film Festival and, and Rachel's taking it to festivals and, and we're all going to, you know, we all went to Berlin and, and where it got the standing ovation. And um, look, like Red Dog, this film seems to roam a long way and we're looking forward to uh, seeing that happen for a long time. Great, well, thanks very much for talking to us. Good luck with the uh, Australian release. Thanks. And um, yeah, thanks very much. All the best. Appreciate it. Take care. Ta Thanks.